Hall of Fame induction. Here is an inductee herself, Mickey James. It's time to pay tribute to one of Native America's greatest musician and music's most distinctive and influential guitarist, Jesse Ed Davis. This is Jesse Ed Davis. Jesse Edmund Davis with Taj Mahal was huge to me. I wanted to rock more. And I wanted to doom dum 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 I'm going up country, gonna pay my mailbox like the sun. And I don't remember no cold days. I just remember the warm, warm fun of the road. Jesse Ed Davis was one of rock and pop's primary session guitarists from 1966 to the late 1970s and continued recording through the mid-1980s. His career in recordings with major rock figures testify to his abilities and status as a multifaceted guitarist known for his fluidity in the idioms of classic rock and roll and the blues, especially on slide guitar. An enrolled Kiowa on his mother's side with Muscogee Creek heritage from his dad, Jesse Edwin Davis III was born September 21, 1944 in Norman. Davis's mother, Vivian, started Jesse Ed on the piano but his father, Jesse II, a Dixieland drummer who played with many local musicians, brought home a guitar for Jesse Ed, or Eddie, to family members. Jimmy Reed and Elvis Presley came along. That really did it for me. We had an old guitar laying around. It was a Stella guitar, I think, one of the 1095 models. And I used to tie a rope around it and put it on my shoulder and stand in front of the mirror, watch myself mimic Jimmy Reed records and stuff. Davis took lessons from a local guitar teacher and at age 16 toured with Dick Clark of American Bandstand on a 30-city tour where Davis met drummer LeVon Helm, then playing with Ronnie Hawkins in the Hawks. After leaving Norman, where he'd been studying literature at the University of Oklahoma, teaching guitar in a local music store and touring with Conway Twitty around 1964, Davis moved to Los Angeles and reconnected with LeVon Helm who introduced him to fellow Oklahoman Leon Russell. Then at the center of studio session work in L.A., Russell hired Davis to record with Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Later, Davis played guitar on the Monkees' 1966 number one hit, Last Train to Clarksville. In 1967, Davis started his four-album association with bluesman Taj Mahal, whose band also consisted of excellent Oklahoma musicians in their own right, Chuck Blackwell on drums and Gary Gilmore on bass, both from Tulsa. On a trip with Mahal to London for the Rolling Stones' rock and roll circus film, Davis met John Lennon in London, and they became close friends. Davis is featured heavily on Lennon's solo albums, Walls and Bridges, and Rock and Roll. Davis recorded three solo albums from 1970 to 1973, often titling songs after places in his home state, but Eddie's best known for his studio work. He's heard on Jackson Brown's 1972 hit, Dr. My Eyes, as well as on albums by B.B. King, Arlo Guthrie, Steve Miller, Brewer and Shipley, The Pointer Sisters, Ringo Starr, John Lee Hooker, Keith Moon, Neil Diamond, Eric Clapton, George Harrison, Rod Stewart, and The Fifth Dimension. In 1985, Davis formed the Graffiti Man Band with American Indian activist, poet, and actor John Trudell. They recorded AKA Graffiti Man, called the Album of the Year by Bob Dylan, who had it played over the public address systems before his concerts that year. Although Jesse Ed Davis died in Los Angeles June 22, 1988, his work has continued appearing on many reissued recordings, film soundtracks, and compilations of significant rock and blues tracks. In 2002, the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame inducted Davis in the blues category. In 2011, Eddie's family was elated that he received the Eldon Shamblin Session Musician Award, given for outstanding work as a studio musician, and that Jesse Ed Davis received his home state's highest award for musical excellence when he was recognized and inducted into the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame.